And now, shock horror, um, Keir Starmer's people are advising Kamala Harris. So that may account for her flip-flopping. Now, um, there was a really stunning um, investigation by uh, Paul D. Thacker and Matt Taibbi. These are two um, uh, independent journalists. Paul Paul Thacker does an enormous amount of like superb work on the disinformation in industry, disinformation in massive inverted commas. Um, they exposed in uh, 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 the last week of October. This is absolutely astonishing. There's this organization called the Center for Countering Digital Hate, CCDH, which is um, it was founded by Morgan McSweeney, um, who was uh, Keir Starmer and remains Keir Starmer's uh, Sven Gali, his his uh, advisor. And so um, CCDH is um, run, was running in secret an operation to quote unquote kill Musk's Twitter. Um, this is the you know the rebranded X. Um, and of course, this uh, the, um, we 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 can argue about how serious Musk's commitment to free speech is. I don't think it is at all. But it, the fact of the matter is, is that it, a lot of people who were kind of banned or suppressed or censored under the uh, previous Twitter regime now actually have a platform or have been you know kind of unsuspended, uh, including Donald Trump himself. Um, I might add, and he seems to be using using Twitter again. So yeah, that like. It's quite remarkable that this organization, CCDH, which is uniquely British and has rather kind of opaque ties to British intelligence, um, is, uh, yes, founded and effectively managed by someone who is advising um, Kamala Harris. Now, um, it's quite clear that there are there are probably um, aspects of this that we that we don't know and can't see. Um, CCDH was initially founded in 2019, and uh, they didn't um, upon launch they didn't disclose who was funding them um, or who uh, was running the operation. Um, CCDH set up something called Stop Funding Fake News, which was a um, it was an effort to deplatform or damage the income at least of alternative news websites from both the right and left and this included the, the canary in the uk but also um sites like the federalist which is kind of like pro-republican very pro-trump uh website in the us and also zero hedge um that's a very popular kind of anonymously um uh curated um uh website uh, and so yeah like an aggregator and like so they they um what stop funding um, uh, fake news uh, now rebranded re to stop funding this misinformation. So, uh, what they would do is they would try and name and shame uh, companies that were advertising on these websites and and pressure them to pull their their advertising. Now um, this was so successful that the Canary, which was this kind of independent left wing, uh, very pro Corbyn um, news website, which uh, was getting at one stage almost ten million hits monthly, they had to like completely slash um, their newsroom because they were. Their, their business model was just completely sabotaged. And um, uh, CCDH was like cheering this, um, having done this. And it's since been acknowledged that Morgan McSweeney saw um, the canary because of its pro-Corbyn stance as very problematic. And so they just they just neutralized it, um, and in this in this very, very, very opaque and shady way. Now, um, yeah, like. In a lot of the reporting on how McSweeney is advising um, Kamala Harris, it is uh, he, he is telling her, quote unquote, how to win. Um, that's per Politico. Um, it is stated over and over and over again that this is largely because Keir Starmer doesn't want to be, quote unquote, left alone um, in supporting Ukraine. So, I mean, there are widespread fears that Trump is going to end the war in Ukraine. He's openly stated that he'll this one of his first acts upon taking office is that he will he will end this. I think that's actually something that Trump's quite good at. Um, when he was in this is rather forgotten, but in a, in like 2017, Saudi Arabia was on the verge of invading Qatar. Uh, like they were like troops at the border, like massing, and he managed to like resolve that. Um, and then signed a mutual defense agreement with Qatar. And so like he's actually quite good at diffusing these things. And it's I think he approaches it like a you know like a business deal. Um there are several other examples like of, of Trump doing similar things where he like, for instance, ended um the entire Syria dirty war because someone showed him a video of a child being beheaded by a CIA backed uh extremist militia in Syria. And he's like, right, well, that's over. 
And this is like one of the biggest covert uh, programs in CIA history to the tune of billions, like funding and arming the Syrian quote unquote opposition. And it ended because um, Trump was very unhappy about it. So I think, yeah, that, that they have a, the British who are, as we've discussed many, many times, they are all in on keeping the proxy war going. They are all in on, um, uh, but it's, it's, it's like across every single British political party supports keeping this going. Like there is yeah. zero, there is zero debate on. And recently, um, Rachel Reeves, who was the Labour Chancellor, she outlined how um, Britain will be funding Ukraine to the tune of three billion annually for "quote unquote" as long as it takes, which is a commitment that Keir Starmer previously made. So, I mean, yeah, they're they're they're, they're determined to keep this going. Um, and yet, if Trump takes power within you know, within a few days, he has pledged to just end this outright. And I think that's, that's probably a very real prospect because actually the Pentagon uh, doesn't want this to continue. It is actually very damaging for the U.S. to keep to keep going because they are the the, the U.S. is uh, depleting all of its stockpiles of missiles and particularly shell artillery shells, and they don't have the infrastructure to uh, repl to replenish this at any speed. There was recently um, uh, a RAND report, RAND's this Pentagon think tank, which explicitly stated that America's industrial base is just basically non-existent at this time. It, it's uh, commissioning and contracting structure just doesn't work. Uh, they can't get the weapons or the ammunition they need like at, at, at any speed. And east, the, the conflict in Ukraine, so here's a, an example of one of the many articles stating that, yes, if Kamala loses, uh, Starmer could be left to confront global threats alone. Um, yes, this illegitimate, unpopular prime minister of this tiny island off the coast of Western Europe um, is going to be facing down like, you know, Iran and Russia, like, you know, all like, all, 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 all in his lonesome. And he doesn't like the idea. He doesn't like the prospect. So but yeah, the, in, in effect, um, yeah, the US wants, I think, a significant proportion of the US uh, kind of imperial brain trust, um, a you know, often a contradiction in terms, wants out of this because they understand it's very damaging for them. And they also understand it's very damaging for their European allies because those sanctions are continuing to cripple, as we've discussed on previous active measures instalments, um, cripple the European countries that impose them. And it's it's damaging the US as well, um, you know, Putin price hike and all that. So they, they, they kind of want to end this. Um, and I think, yeah, that 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 that, that Trump could deliver that. Um, uh, yeah, more generally, uh, as it's kind of well established now, like British intelligence was was heavily involved in RussiaGate, which was obviously an effort to prevent um, uh, cordial relations between the US and Russia under Trump's watch. He spent a significant part of his presidency trying to prove that he wasn't um, a you know, Kremlin puppet. Uh, never really beat the allegations in the liberal mind. Um, but so, I mean, I think that, I mean, this is, uh, if you just scroll down to the very end, Alex, this is an essay uh, that appeared on the website of an organization called the Institute for Statecraft in 2014, I think it was in July, where at the very end of the piece, it calls for Russia to be diplomatically isolated, demonized via black propaganda, because this will create uh, war of the old fashioned sort, which the West and Great Britain could win. Now, we got that conflict in uh, the start of 2022, and it hasn't really worked out, and it's not been this grand civilizational battle. Um, Institute for Statecraft was founded by an individual named Chris Donnelly. He's now advising the UK government on how to uh, prosecute the proxy war. And in leaked uh, documents and emails that I've reported on, he has talked about the need to counter US hesitancy and reluctance to get fully involved in this. Um, Starm has been trying to do the same with the Kursk incursion. So, I mean, they are all in on this and, you know, nothing's going to stop them. So if Trump does win, Christ knows what they've got cooked up for him this time. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I would just add a word of caution because I think that a lot of what laid the groundwork for the war in Ukraine was policy that was implemented yes. under Mike Pompeo's State Department, i.e. Trump's yes. State Department. Um, this was an unprecedented number of uh, military drills in Eastern Europe. This was the uh, first time that uh, Ukraine was allowed to have lethal aid from the United States. They were not allowed under Obama to have lethal aid from the U.S. That was reversed by Trump. 
Um, and you had a huge number of, uh, you know, like more than 200 sanctions imposed. You had uh, the expulsion of huge numbers of Russian diplomats from the United States. Um, yeah. and, and, and I, you know, I saw uh, in Trump's interview with Joe Rogan um, just the other week that uh, he was once again praising Mike Pompeo. Um, so it is not difficult to imagine that he would have a role to play in another Trump administration. And I also like, I want to just talk about really quickly, you know, Trump has said that ending the war in Ukraine would be a, a top priority. He's also said ending the war in Gaza would be a top priority. Um, mm -hmm. you Trump, Trump has this way of negotiating where he kind of goes nuclear and then dials it back right so if you yes. remember with kim jong un he was he was threatening uh fire and fury right yes. and then they wound up they wound up kind of easing relations and, and and meeting with each other which was truly a historic moment but um trump has said that you know netanyahu needs to be allowed to end the war so what does that mean does that mean leveling gaza I mean, mm -hmm. what what exact? I mean, if 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 it's Netanyahu's goal to uh, neutralize Hamas, uh, and Trump wants him to be able to achieve his objectives earlier, uh, you know that 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 could that could be much worse for for Gaza. I think, um, mm -hmm. I think that Trump's goal really is uh, to have. Uh, the Abraham Accords implemented, which would mean a normalization of relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia, since October 7th, has said that they will not normalize relations with Israel until, uh, until you know, uh, there's a, a Palestinian state. So does that mean that Trump will come around to supporting uh, mm. a Palestinian state? It could mean that. I think that he has would have a much easier time uh, bossing around Bibi than bossing around Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, so there's that. Mm. And, and I mean, it really remains to be seen what uh, a resolution would look like under Trump, but I don't think that it would necessarily be uh, any cleaner than what we're seeing today. Um, I do think that like while the Democrats have kind of given Bibi orders and uh, given him weapons while he has disobeyed those orders uh trump would take far less kindly to insubordination by netanyahu so i mean there's that and once you're on his bad side uh it's it's usually not it's it doesn't look good for you so i mean i would right. just i i would just i mean it's it's fascinating and you know uh this thing about the canary uh there was yes. some weirdness with that uh with that website. Um, and I, I'm starting to wonder if it had to do with the center for countering digital, whatever, um, hey, because they were staunchly anti anti imperialist. Um, mm -hmm. and then something changed. It was very weird. They started putting out all these articles that were, for example, promoting the dirty war in Syria. Uh, well, they went anarchist. They went anarchist is the thing. I mean, yeah, kind of, I mean, I'm talking like I'm talking like vice anarchist, right? And you have you yeah. have to almost wonder if that was uh, that was infiltration. Um, I don't have a whole lot of details on that. I know uh, there is one at former editor who left the Canary. I think she, she may have even been fired. Who uh, I happen to like, um, yeah. who's probably got stories to tell here. But um, yeah, this uh, this this uh, infiltration of the uh, Kamala campaign is. Is quite interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's very, it's very, it's very, unpre it's very unprecedented because, of course, like the U.S. is like the world center of, um, you know, election campaign assistance. Um, you know, like the, all of these firms based in D.C. are like kind of spread out across the world. It's not really, the, the, it's never really happened before, like in reverse, that the British are getting giving the Americans tips on how to how to manage election campaigns is, is always in, in reverse and and typically the labor party has actually just copied the democrats so like in the in the they uh the tony blair um when he became labor leader he just started copying what bill clinton did in order to yeah. win over kind of republican in order to win over conservative voters as clinton won over republicans um <clears throat> yeah um so i mean yeah, i think that we can yeah and where where are the <laughs> where ahead. are the far registrations 
Yes, you know? indeed, indeed. <laughs> we well, talk I mean, about Russia interference. It's... Well, I think it's uh, it's important to note that like the um, that Trump's campaign has said that um, another reason why the British want the Kamala to win is that Trump has said that the uh, the Trump's campaign has said that um, the, that the CCDH will be investigated from all angles. Um, yeah. And I think that bearing in mind that the CCDH, they, they are have been working with the Biden White House to censor people since COVID. And they've been drawing up lists of people to get suppressed, censored, shut, banned, um, et cetera, on social media platforms, which the Biden administration, Biden administration was obviously very, very keen on censorship. And they, they kind of like outsourced the, the work of identifying offenders to, to CCDH. So, um, you know, if you are, if you pick at that scab, it will probably uncover like quite a lot of pus. Um, and um, on top of Trump's potentially empty promises to uh, uh, to to end the uh, end the proxy war, so um, yeah, we should we shall see all to play for. Let's leave the election alone. Uh, well, uh, I, I do. I do really. <laughs> I, I would like to. There's an article that I wanted to bring up that we kind of missed. Okay. Um, and we can sure. we can make a, sure. a separate little section for this because. Uh, you know there ha there's been a, a little bit of uh, cries of you know foreign interference in uh, this election cycle. Not a whole lot compared to previous ones, but this might be very important because if you look, you have U.S. administration officials, Biden administration officials, um, claiming this is the uh, Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency (CISA). Um, you can talk more about CISA in a bit if you like. Uh, but they're saying the election is not over the night of November, November 5th. This is Jen Easterly, the director of, of, of CISA. Uh, it is very likely there will be close races that require the paper record to be counted and recounted and audited to ensure accuracy. It is between that period when the polls close and when the vote is certified that our foreign adversaries will likely be most active in trying to sow partisan discord and undermine American confidence in the election. They will do this by creating a wedge between the campaigns of the Republican nominee and the Democrat nominee by mounting possibly even more active influence and disinformation operations that raise doubts about the accuracy of the vote in what is expected to be a very close election. Easterly and her chief deputy, Kate Conley, said in, said in an interview with Foreign Policy. So what they're doing now is that they're seeding the ground that, that, that basically uh, any questioning of the election results will be due to foreign influence um and i think yeah. i think i think the real problem here is that um every institution of the united states government has failed and people have yeah. lost trust in those institutions and they see that the united states rigs elections abroad with impunity year after year and you're left to wonder if they're willing to do that to other people well, are they willing to do that to Trump, the guy who's you know claiming to uh, want to stop all this foreign meddling? Um, so this is something to look out for. Uh, I do think that it will be interesting because if it is the case that Trump wins, uh, the Democrats are going to have to go back to be election deniers, um, which is what they did in 2016. So something to keep an eye on. And I wanted to bring that to our viewers' attention. I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add about CISA. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, we've we, we we've talked before about um, about CISA. I mean, it is a deeply politicized wing of um, the uh, the DHS. Department of Homeland, yeah, the Department of Homeland Security, and they were heavily involved in the uh, construction of the now defunct and, and largely forgotten disinformation governance board, which was this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, if if you if uh, our viewers recall this, this was um, uh, launched with much fanfare. Uh, was it in? It was in 2022 at some stage, and then within a few weeks, it got shut down because there was a huge backlash. It was fronted by this awful woman called uh, Nina Jankovic, who has this history of like endorsing the Steele dossier and libeling WikiLeaks and other independent. Um, 
truth tellers as like pawns of the Kremlin. Um, it was quite clear that this was an attempt to create a, a formal US kind of censorship, Ministry of Truth style um, operation. And then due to a, part, a bipartisan backlash from both the left and right in the US, it got shut down. Um, and Caesar was was involved in its construction, and yeah, it was obviously the 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 vic the primary victims of this would have been Trump supporters. Um, but yeah, the, I think that as well that I mean, in it, it's as we'll get into in due course, it's very interesting that they are warning that um, any claims of election interference or jiggery pokery chicanery with the results shenan shenanigans, whatever you want to call it, is a foreign plot. And then meanwhile, in Georgia. They are. There is all of these U.S. organizations which are saying that the results of their election at the end of October were fraudulent. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, it's uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.